I'm not the biggest fan of word clouds being used for any kind of statistical measure, but I do think they have their merits. They can be created fairly easily and be understood without too much effort. So today I'm going to show you not only how to make word clouds in R, but how to make them a bit more useful and look better. So the first thing we're going to do is install and load in our packages. If you don't already have the word cloud 2 package installed, you can go ahead and run this line. I had some issues with the word cloud 2 package when I installed .packages, so I had to get it straight from the GitHub repository. We're also going to load in the TM package, which stands for text mining, which will allow us to do some text cleaning. Also going to load in reader, which will let us read in our CSV file. And of course the dplyr package, which allows us to do some piping and do some other functions to work with our data frames. Now I'm going to go ahead and read in our data set. And let me quickly show you what this data set is. So I got this off of Kaggle. It's essentially a lot of articles from medium.com uh, web scraped. So we've got the URL of the article, the title, the subtitle, some images that were used, how many claps responses, and the publication and date. We're actually going to be building our word cloud off of the title. So you can ignore the other columns for now, but we'll kind of get back to those a bit later. Now, before we can get into actually building our word cloud, we definitely need to do some text cleaning. You can see that there are a lot of miscellaneous punctuation and non-letter characters here. There's also some HTML over here that we need to get rid of before we make our word cloud. And that's where the TM library comes in because it has a lot of built-in functions that allow us to do that text cleaning. And after we do all the text cleaning, we need to have a data frame that essentially looks like this, where we have a column with all of our words that are gonna go in the word cloud, and then another column with some kind of weight or frequency where the higher the number, the larger it'll appear in the word cloud. So the first step is gonna be creating a corpus from a vector of our text documents. A corpus is essentially just a collection of documents and it allows us to use some of those text cleaning functions on our documents pretty easily. So I'm gonna create this variable called medium corpus and we're gonna call the corpus command that's built into the TM package. We're gonna pass in medium CSV and we're gonna use the title column. Once we run that, we get our medium.corpus variable on the right. And then looking back at my data frame, I was telling you how there are these HTML tags around some of our text. So I'm gonna really quickly write a custom function to remove the HTML and just leave what's inside. So that's what I've got right here. So essentially this function will take in some text and it's gonna use this gsub command which will take in a regular expression. This is essentially saying the first part of the HTML tag, it'll replace with an empty string. And the second part of the HTML tag will also be replaced with an empty string. And then that text will be returned. But anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and apply some of those text mining map functions that pretty much do a lot of the text cleaning for us. So we're gonna grab our medium.corpus variable and start doing some piping. So we'll run tm map content transformer and we'll pass in our own custom remove HTML function. And essentially this will take all those titles in that original corpus and run it through this function that I just wrote. And then we're gonna use some of the built-in functions like remove numbers, remove punctuation, strip the white space, convert everything to lowercase. And we're also gonna remove some stop words. There are a couple of built-in stop words that I'll show you in a sec, but I'm gonna use stop words English and stop words smart. So I'll run stop words English and just show you so stop words English has a lot of these types of stop words that we don't really want in our word cloud. Stop words smart is going to be similar. It's going to have a lot of these common English words that we're not going to want in our word cloud. And just by running these, we'll get rid of a lot of unnecessary words. So once our text is sufficiently cleaned, we're going to create a term document matrix, which is essentially a giant matrix where each row represents a word, each column represents a document, and then the cell corresponds to how many times the word appears in the document. To create our TDM or term document matrix, we're going to call the term document matrix function and we're going to pass in the corpus that we just created. We're also going to pipe this into as.matrix just to convert it to a normal R matrix that we can work with. Now we need to compute the row wise sums so we can get a total count for each word and we also want to sort it by how frequently the words appear in the documents. So I'll make a new variable called words and we're going to set this to row sums TDM, and we want it to be decreasing, so the highest number is at the top. Lastly, we're going to make this into a data frame that has two columns. First is going to be the word column, that's just going to be the name of the words. And second is going to be the frequency, that's going to be the actual value of how many times they appeared in the documents. We can run this and open up our data frame we just created. And you can see that we get the words and their respective frequencies, but I noticed some issues. I mean, there's this hyphen up here at the top, this apostrophe, this don't that got cut off. So it looks like the text mining functions were only able to do so much. So we'll need to go back and manually filter out some of these rows. So I'm going to go back to our code and manually remove some of those rows. So we're going to pipe our data frame into the filter command. And we're going to filter by the rows where the word is greater than the length of two. 
and it's not equal to that don't without the T. So once we run that and we go back to our data frame, you can see we got rid of those rows and now we're working with just normal words. So we can move on to actually creating our word cloud. So this is actually pretty simple. We just need to run the word cloud to command and pass in our data frame. Once we run that, we'll see our word cloud starts to populate and be created on the right side here. There are actually a lot of different parameters we can pass into our word cloud to, and that's actually what we're gonna be looking at for the remainder of the video, how to make your word clouds look better. Now, if you remember what our data frame, the original data frame of the Medium articles looked like, there were a lot of different publications. And you can see data is this huge word over here, learning is here, um, but some of these publications, if we go ahead and look at them, they're not all about data. There's Towards Data Science, most likely about data, but there's also UX Collective, Better Marketing, and it's unlikely that this word cloud is a full representation of these seven different publications. So I think one way to make our word cloud better is actually separate it by publication. And I think for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna look at Towards Data Science and UX Collective, just to show the contrast between the type of titles and articles that are being written about. So essentially we wanna use word clouds as a comparison tool rather than a standalone thing. So maybe you're comparing five star reviews on Amazon with one star reviews just to see what the strengths and weaknesses are of a product. But regardless, I do think that separating your word cloud by data can make them more useful. So we'll go back to our code and at the very top here, when we're reading in our data, we're just gonna add a line to filter the publication by UX Collective. So we're gonna start with that publication and then later do towards data science. So if we run all of our code, you can see now the word cloud looks really different. Instead of data being the most common word, it's design. And if we change this to towards data science and rerun all of our code, now we've got data, learning, machine, Python. You can see that the word clouds are now very different, but we're gonna change this back to the UX collective and start doing some more modifications with our word cloud. So the first thing we're gonna do is change up the colors. Now, right now it's using this dark color palette, but I actually looked up what the UX collective logo looks like, and it's this polar bear with these four or five different colors. I found this website called imagecolorpicker.com, and if I go back to this polar bear and copy the image address, I can paste the URL here, and it'll grab the image for me. So when I click on different elements of the image, it'll show me the actual hex values of the color. So I'm gonna go back to my code and I've grabbed the hex values of some of the different colors. And I also wanted the background to be that nice blue color. So I'll go ahead and run these just to set them. And now I can pass in a parameter for color. So UXC colors. And we're also gonna pass in our background color, UXC.background. If I run this, you can see that it colored a couple of the words, but not all of them. And the reason is because this UXC colors is only of length three, whereas there are just so many words. So what we need to do is wrap this around rep len, which essentially can make this vector the same length as the number of words we have if we also pass in n row, number of rows of our data frame. And now when we run this, you can see that the vector of these three colors will keep repeating over and over, so all the words are colored. Now another quick improvement we can make is changing up the font, because I'm not a huge fan of this default font. So we're gonna use the extra font library here, which will come in handy. And if you don't have this installed, you can install .packages extra font. The first time you use it, you'll need to run this command, font.import, which will essentially import all of your system fonts into R so you can use them, but I've already done that. And then to see what fonts are available for you to use, you just run the fonts command. Whoops, let me load in the library. And that'll show you all the system fonts you have installed that you can use in R. So I'm gonna use this font called DM Sans, and I'll just pass in another parameter, font family, and set that to DM Sans. I can run this. And now I have a word cloud that doesn't look as dated as the last one. So one thing you might have noticed is that when I ran this, the big design word actually disappeared. And this is because Word Cloud 2 dynamically generates these word clouds based on the size of the window. So if I click this button to open up our word cloud in the browser, you can see that the design word comes back and our word cloud looks a bit different. But if I resize this window to something smaller and hit refresh, now that design disappears. So I'm gonna build my word cloud to fully try and fill the frame of this Chrome window. And in order to do that, I'll have to mess around with some of the parameters for the word cloud. So I actually did this earlier and I found that size equals 2.5 works the best for keeping design in the frame. And I'm also gonna set the min size to be five. And essentially, the higher you make this number, the less of these words down here will appear. So you'll have to play with these 
and try to get them exactly how you want them to make sure that none of the words are being cut off. But yeah, that is a small annoying quirk that you're going to have to deal with. Another issue I have with this word cloud is I don't really love the rotation, how some of these words are straight, some of them are slightly rotated, but we can set the rotate ratio to be zero. And essentially that'll set the probability of every word being rotated to zero. So they're all going to be horizontal. If we run this, you can see all of our words are horizontal. It actually got rid of a lot of the smaller words too. Um, but if I open it in our Chrome browser, now we get what the full word cloud would look like. So if I want to save this image, I would just right click and save it here instead of using the R viewer window which I know is cutting off a lot of those words. But I am pretty happy with how this UX collective word cloud looks. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing essentially for the Towards Data Science publication, just so we can get our full final comparison of the two. So this is the Towards Data Science logo, and this is the word cloud that I ended up generating. And now putting the two different word clouds side by side, you can see they both look pretty cool. They both kind of resemble their logos, and they're obviously very different. So I think splitting up the data was definitely a good modification we made. And just to quickly touch on the other modifications you could make, you could actually add a mask so your letters only occupied certain areas of the page. This mask could be a custom image file, like a PNG. There are also a different preset shapes you can use, like diamonds or hearts. And there's also a letter cloud command, which allows you to pass in a string of text that the words in the word cloud will take the shape of. Another suggestion is to run the stem words command on some of our text. You can see here that there's the word design, designing, designer, and designers, which could all be compressed into essentially one word because they're all really talking about the same thing. And it's actually pretty easy to do this. We would just run the TM map function again and pass in stem document. So now you see we have one big design here instead of all the different variations of the word design. Now the issue is that we have other words like study and experi, which are just partial words, but maybe this is something you'd want to use in an exploratory way just to see what kind of topics your text is about. About. Another suggestion would be looking into n-grams like bigrams. So maybe there are word pairs that appear very frequently in your text that you could build word clouds off of. And I'd also recommend checking out this article by Marty Hurst called Word Clouds. We can't make them go away, so let's improve them. And they talk about this idea of separating your content and then visually dividing it to make it more readable and understandable. So that's pretty much it for this video. And I'd recommend checking out these other videos if you're interested in this type of content. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.